Alright, I have an iPad mini here, old school. With, um, you know, I was getting no Apple logo, so it's, it's got a backlight problem, and I rarely ever. So, first thing I always do is make sure I see an, see an, uh, see an Apple logo or some sort of image on the screen with a backlight problem because with a backlight problem you're always going to see an image. Uh, it's going to be a very faint image but there's going to be an image. Okay, I didn't see it on this so it was but I tested the backlight filter and it was definitely dead and on the iPad mini this is the backlight filter right here. One, two, three. This this one right here. This middle one and it was dead. Okay, so I replaced it. I replaced this one too just because it looked like it was jacked up. Someone had already gotten to this so uh, and then the backlight still didn't work. I did a DFU, and finally I was able to see an Apple logo. So I don't know what was going on with that. Maybe the battery wasn't charged. Sometimes the battery's not charged, and it uh, jacks things up. Also, I had to replace this uh, component right here next to the battery pad busted out, so I had to scrape away some of the ground plane and connect it. Uh, I don't know. May maybe that was contributing to the problem as well, but. Um, so once I replaced all this, it was still not working. So I'm like, what the fuck? I know the backlight system has a uh, backlight filter, usually a coil, and usually a diode. So look at the schematics, and I've never actually replaced the diode on this puppy before, but uh, the diode is hidden under this little thing right here, coils right here. Um, so in order to test it, what you gotta do is uh, put your multimeter in diode mode, and this is true for any diode. And you just put your lead. It does. So you're gonna do it both ways. So it doesn't matter which lead you put it on first. Okay. So this one's in diode mode. And it says OL this way. Now I pop it to the other side, and it says 1.9 volts, and it goes to OL. So basically, it's it's open. This thing is dead. It should read right around 0.2 volts going going anywhere from 0.2 to 0.7 right around there and if it reads uh, one point something going one way and then some voltage going the other way then it's a bad diode so you can also compare it to a known good a known good uh, working iPad or iPhone and uh, you can compare it that way so what I'm gonna do is replace the diode and that should fix the backlight problem I mean, I don't even know why people do this anymore because the backlight is not generally on iPad Mini. It's just not really worth fixing, you know, I mean, because you can probably get a new one for, especially since I DFU'd this thing, which I probably didn't have to do, but anyways, so this diode is bad. And I'm going to replace it, and the backload is going to work. Echo. Echo. Trigger soldering on. So I'm actually going to use a little bit of low melt. I got a new thing of low melt here. This this stuff is awesome, actually. Um, I like this. never buy an SRA stuff ever again. But this one is it's called Mechanic. And I think I paid like about seven, eight bucks for it. It's a lot cheaper than all that other stuff. Lead free tin bismuth. Yeah, it works pretty well. So, so I'm gonna use a little low melt because I don't really want to use heat, and I don't definitely don't want to take the lodge board out. And I'm gonna get my knife tip. I love this uh, JBC, by the way. I have this knife tip for it, and I, I barely even use Mohaco anymore. Barely, barely ever. So I'm gonna put a little bit of like that. Put a little bit of flux on it, real quick.
I think I'm about to get a little more. I gotta, I gotta increase my fume. Because that sucker's going to my nose. Okay, now let's uh, see if we can get to it now. Come on, tweezers. I'm just going to chuck this because there is no re other reason for it. Mm, let me get my my new diode out. You can buy these on DigiKey. I don't really do a whole lot of these repairs. Because the iPad Mini is one of the Apple products that it's almost always cheaper to buy a new one than fix. Well, maybe not cheaper, but maybe more cost effective. Actually, let me remove this. Let me remove the um the old flux for the old uh, solder first. So I don't want that stuff. All right, well, that's good enough. I'm going to get some leaded solder now, and tin it, make it a little bit easier to flow. Probably could put a little more flux on it. Here, let's do this. This this is really how you're supposed to flux right here, or solder right here. There you go. Now let's put the new one on with my tweezers. I'm going to try to do it this way. And I don't really know which way this goes, the direction of this puppy. Uh, let me check the schematics real quick. Alright, so the cathode side is on the top side of the way I'm looking at it right now, so so we're going to have to do it this way. Yes. Even with these expensive tweezers, you're, you're still going to get a mismatch, and uh, probably should use just a little more flux. But all right, that's good. Solid joint right there. Let's clean it up a little bit. Alright, so we are good pretty much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this and I'll show you guys when I power it on, see if it works or not. Okay.
Whoa! All right, there you go. And we, my friends, are back in business. I'm going to end this now so that you guys don't see my face in the reflection of this iPad.